All right, so welcome to another section in GIS. All right, so in this section, we'll be talking about how to acquire GIS data, collect, and also manage your data. All right, this is a very, very important part of GIS that you really need to understand. And um, before we go further, I'll need to let you know that um, data collection and data management are two different things. All right, data collection can also be called by digitizing or delineation. All right, so in the next slide, we we'll look at manual digitization, data interpretation, and screen delineation, and setting and managing file properties. Okay, so first of all, what is digitization? Or what is digitizing in GIS? The definition from wikigis.com says that digitizing is all about the process of converting coordinates from a map. It can be a scanned map, it can be an image, whatever it is. You are converting the coordinates of any properties in the map to a source in digital format in GIS. Okay, you see, or other sources of data are converted to a digital format in GIS. And the digital format in GIS we know of are in point line and polygons. Okay, so now there are two major types of digitizing in GIS. We have the manual digitizing and we have the heads of digitizing. The heads of digitizing is what we'll be doing today. Why the manual digitizing is making use of another hardware, a tablet, which is mostly a magnetic pen. When you overlay it on a, a raster map or a, 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 a copy map, it has a way of tracing out its it's a digital format. So in this method, digitizers use digitizing tablet, meaning that digitizer graphs, tablets, or touch tablets to trace the points, line, or polygons from a hard copy map. This is done using a special magnetic pen or stylus that feeds information into a computer, creates an identical digital map. So this is more like a manual way. You just trace it out as if you are drawing a pen on a map, the way you trace it out itself. So, but the heads of digitizing is where you have a raster map overlaid on your software and you're tracing out all its details in point, line, and polygons, okay, which we are going to be using ArcGIS, ArcMap. All right, so the first thing we have to do now is to open your ArcMap and cancel this if you have opened the previously, um, previous project or you just go to New and open a new map. Alright, so the first thing we have to do is set up your layer properties, like I always say, the environment matters. So you right click on layers and go to properties. Once you go to properties, see projector coordinate system, you select GTM, and you select Africa, and you go to Mina Zone 31 knots. Since we are working somewhere in the West Niger Western Nigeria region, West South Nigeria. Alright, so now. The data we'll be working with is the previously data we did on, in the georeferencing class. If you've georeferenced your map properly, I want you to add that same map into this um, layer. Add Ikeja map georeference. You see it in your results folder where you save your georeference results. So once you've added the data, make sure that this data is georeferenced. If it's given a complaint of unknown special reference, you have to repeat the previous training class and make sure it is true reference all right so we have five and seven in meters that's to be sure if the map is actually true reference all right so now the next thing we have to do is to create layers for each and every um attribute we have here okay you can see we have roads we have um points of bus stops we have um, different land use type we have buildings here and also we have um we have other buildings, we have um, we have different streets, names, road, different types of roads, different types of buildings and so on like that. So the only thing we need in this map is to trace out all of this. That is the heads of digitizing. Right? Now in this aspect you can also have a let's say satellite imagery. Okay now let's try something else. I want you to look at your section here this um, um it's up here and right click on actuals once you right click on this go to properties okay once you go to properties check periodically during this session i want you to specify this to 10 seconds okay once you've done that click on okay now you wait for 10 seconds 
make sure you have a workable internet you have a connection to your internet and you click on this drop down by my right here you see add base map okay now we are going to add a base map a satellite imagery once you add a base map you select topography okay you can select whichever one that suits you but for this training we'll be selecting topography then you click on add let's uncheck this so that we have the base map overlaid this is going to take some time depending on how strong your network is okay so if this is not showing as usual you have to wait for some time if it doesn't come up i want you to select this drop up again okay wait it doesn't come up yet <laughs> all right so now in this aspect because we are working on projected coordinate system and the base map we are working with is wgs ninety eighty four is geographic coordinate system so it's going to ask you to transform just close this okay now the base map has been added let's uncheck this one so you'll notice that um, we have our base map overlaid and you can either choose to delineate or digitize from this base map or you choose your already existing map okay this already existing map has already been um, dereferenced so we can choose any of them so for us to avoid zooming in and um, with the internet and all we'll just use the already existing map all right so you can choose with either one too so in your own location you can choose to digitize from any part of the world you will still acquire the the digital copy of the map itself that's the coordinates the line the point the polygon you can digitize as many as you want for the sake of this training i want us to do the next step um, creating our data layers okay creating the shape file with your database that's one important thing we have to arrange our files properly okay so go to your r catalog navigate to the folder you're working with that's geoinfotech you have your data here all right inside this folder here we're going to right click here and go to new once you go to new you go to folder and select acquiring data you see you can say acquiring data or digitizing acquiring data okay so for this section we're going to right click here go to new create a personal geo database okay the personal geo database we're working on is in the Ikeja I want you to right click on this and rename Ikeja okay we're working in Ikeja so you right click on this again and go to new you select feature data sets the feature data sets we're working with is Ikeja underscore you can say Ikeja underscore map all right we go to next and in this next part we're going to select a projected coordinate system go to utm africa and nina zone 31 knots the essence of using um G database for something like this is to help you organize your data properly okay so right click on ikeja map and go to new and create feature class feature class is also called feature uh, shape file and it's also called um another word for shape file feature class they are also vector data all right go to feature class so the first data we need to create is road okay row a d you can just type this as r d road our road is going to be a line feature all right once you click line feature it goes to next and you can just select in the road we'll be having name and um, the name is going to be text you can select this one as 100 some name names of some roads can be longer than 50. you can give this one as length of the road length of the road you select short integer you select double sorry because you might have some numbers with dots i will explain all of this before in the previous class so i want you to look at the previous training on the um, catalog we've explained most of all of this so um we'll do with this and then uh, we'll go to finish all right so if you've done that let's create one more 
that is for buildings or oh, let's say land use let's give it land use new the reason why i'm selecting this land use is based on what i have here on the legend so if you are working with other maps and you see that on the legend or maybe if it doesn't have a legend you study the map and you notice that different layers of properties you can pick it based on that we have traffic places railway water but land use different land use and stuff like that so i'm going to select road and we're going to do for land use so you select this right click on ikeja map go to new feature class once you go to feature class i want you to name this one as land use and this one as land use early so land use is a polygon feature you can see it as a polygon road is a line that's why we selected line so you go to next for land use you're going to select type this one is going to be text it's not going to be longer it's a good select name you can have name as text this one has 100 and um what else do we need for name type okay you can give this one as name or class it depends on what you want so this is very very important anytime you're working on a project it's always good you know how to arrange your file how to arrange your layers how to solve sort of this before you even start the project it helps you to make your work much more organized so you go to finish all right so if you've done this the next thing you have to do is to start digitizing you notice that all the data all the files we've created are already added on our layers here land use road okay so you can choose to right click here and rename this file you won't see rename here once you click on it wait for one second click on it again and write road this one click on its name again land use okay so we have land use and road so we'll start with road you right click on road that's the best way to start editing go to edit feature and start editing I click on road start editing start editing here all right so once you've done that the next thing you have to do is you see this edit feature create features once you click on create feature you see road you select road all right once you've selected road you see the cursor has changed to a cross sign once the cursor has changed to a cross sign the next thing you just have to do is to start tracing and before you start tracing you have to zoom in properly to be sure of the road you are tracing for example now when my board estates is going throughout this line okay for you to know the total length of where my board estate it's better you trace it from here all right down here like this You see the way I'm tracing this line. Once you reach the final um, end of where my board estate, you double click. Okay. Another way to do that is once you click on this again, you click here, you click here. Another way to end the the trace is to right click and finish sketch. If you finish it from the last one you did. So now you notice that this last one you did, you want to continue digitizing. What you have to do is you make sure this is highlighted. If it is highlighted, you select this button, Edit Tool. Once you select Edit Tool, you can highlight anyone. Okay. Once this is highlighted, you select Edit Vertex. Okay. Once you select Edit Vertex, you can drag this further. Okay. Then you double click or you right click and just a minute once you click out it has already edited itself already okay so now another way of editing this in case you want to add another layer that comes here like this once this is selected you select this edit vertex once you select edit vertex you select this plus sign add vertex vertex once you add vertex you can add vertex in the middle here okay then you bring this one like this and drag this one further here like this and you bring this one further like this okay 
because you've added vertex then you click outside twice okay that is how to edit your feature now another way if you want to split this you can either use this one cut polygon because it's not a polygon feature so it won't be able to cut or you can shape features okay you see it has shaped the feature itself okay now if you want to undo you just press ctrl z or you go back okay you press ctrl z or you go back okay so another way of editing arc points you can use this one you can create an arc from this point you double click and it will create an arc for you all right so that's these are different ways of how you can edit your feature. Now, in other words, let's just edit one more or two. So we're done. So now, um, one important thing again is that once you are editing, it's always important that you fill in the attribute details as you are editing. Now, I'm going to put you through that easily. Okay. Since this is highlighted, or you want to fill in the attribute details when my board estates. You select the edit tool, click on Rema board estates. Then you see this attribute, you click on it. You need to give it a name called Rema board estates. Okay, the length is not visible here. We don't know the length, so there is no point adding the length. It has already been added here automatically. Okay, because this is a data with location inbuilt attributes these are inbuilt attributes all right so now the same thing goes for ojora avenue if you click on ojora avenue you see that it is different from adebo adebo street so for us to cancel this it's best for us to start editing and you click on this delete vertex once you click on delete vertex, you click on this and you double click outside. You see it has deleted here. Okay, so now you can select this and go to attributes. Then you give it a name called Ojora. Ojora, Ojora Avenue. Then you click enter. Once you've done that, you go to the next one. If you want to start editing, Make sure you click on this create feature, then you click on road. Once you click on road, then you can start tracing a new one. Notice that this is not properly aligned on the map. So you zoom in properly. Once you zoom in properly, you are able to put it here. Then it goes here like this, like this, like this. You can zoom out so you can see the entire area. And you trace it out okay this is one of the difficult aspects in chairs especially when you're creating your map yourself and you're creating your data yourself it's a lot way difficult but it's worthwhile especially when you're creating your analysis with your data okay so now note that any digital image or any trace you made always put in the attribute details this is a straight line double click on this once you've done that click on this attribute you give it a name called Ali Balogun Streets very good you see the length has automatically been added this is showing that it's at about 270 meters okay so that is that for road if you are done with this make sure you click on editor save edit first then click on editor stop editing okay the very best is safer like that it's best you do it like that so now we're going to do that of land use you go to land use right click on land use go to edit feature start editing all right so we're going to zoom to where we have the different land use type and the blue shows that this is a commercial area so like I said before, you click on this to start editing, you click on land use, and you start tracing. You trace out each as appropriate, as visible as possible. Make sure it is well detailed so that you don't 
get it mixed up. I think I made a mistake here so we're supposed to go like this so I want you to undo undo ctrl z ctrl z then ctrl z you come here like this come here like this like this okay and like this Okay, you're doing good like that. Okay, then you double click on this. Very good, this is very good. So, once you've done this, select attributes, give it a name type called commercial. Very good. Because we don't know the name of this, um, we don't really know the name of the land use, so you can just leave it as a data type as commercial. Okay, so um, in this, if you want to split, definitely you can just draw a line and you split it into two. If you open the attribute details of this, you see that you have two shape files one for here and one for this other one. You see, it is highlighted. If I like this second one, it's highlighting only this one. If I like this first one, it's highlighting only this one. Okay. So if you want to undo, you can go back here or just Ctrl Z. 